So uh, today's class, we're going to discuss how to write chemical equations. There are three types of chemical equations you can write. The first type is the balanced chemical equation, where uh, it's also known as the molecular equation, where you show how two different chemicals are reacting to, pr to produce two other substances. And here we show a classical reaction that we use for demonstrations because it produces a nice, brightly colored precipitate. It makes a pl uh, uh, plumbus iodide led to iodide. So that's why we put an S there, because it forms a precipitate, the yellow precipitate when you mix uh, sodium iodide with lead and nitrate. Both of these things are soluble in water. So you see we put aqueous there to show that they're soluble in water. And two sodium iodides because we need to have the same number of atoms going in on one side has come out on the other side. There has to be, and you can't have elements disappearing into the ether. Uh, so if you have two sodium atoms on the left, you have to have two sodium atoms on the right. If you have two iodide atoms on the left, you have to have two, two iodides on the right, and so on. So we call this the molecular equation. And these are stoichiometric coefficients. So to balance the equation properly, you have to put a two in front of the sodium iodide, because the uh, plumbus ion is a plus two charge, so it's going to need two uh, singly charged iodide ions to combine it. Once we've balanced the equation, we can go to the next step and show the ionic equation. The ionic equation shows all the molecules as they um, would appear as they're represented in, in aqueous solution. So this molecule breaks apart into sodium ions and, and iodide ions. This molecule breaks apart into the uh, plumbus ions and nitrate anions. All of them are symbolized with AQ after to show that they're dissolved in the water. On the other side of the equation, you see the product forming. Here it is, solid. Whereas the other two things, the sodium cations and the nitrate anions, stay in solution. So they're spectators. They're spectator ions. We cross those out to write the next equation, which is called the net ionic equation, where you only show the two things that are reacting to form the, the uh, solid. So two iodide ions and two plumbus ion and one plumbus ion combined to form lead iodide. In the next example, we show a strong base reacting with a strong acid to form a salt in water. This is what happens. Anytime you react a strong acid and a strong acid and a strong base, you will get as a product salt and water. So to make this question easier to understand, we will, uh, I just recommend you uh, memorize the strong acids and the strong bases. There's a mnemonic you can use for memorizing strong acids. I use it all the time. You write, you make the mnemonic no, so, clock, hold, brief. No, so, clock, hold, brief. Then you write the numbers, three, four, four. You write an H in front of every one. The only one that has two hydrogens is sulfuric. So those are the, the six strong acids. If it's not a strong acid, it's a weak acid. Uh, some people also will add uh, to that list uh, chloric acids, which, uh, which is HClO3, that I haven't included in this list. These are the, strength, uh, the six strong acids that are most commonly used. Um, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroionic acid. There's another mnemonic that you can use to memorize what the strong bases are. These are uh, salts, these are solutions, rather, that will, will form hydroxide ion in aqueous solution. Strong bases are nacre, caserba, and then you put OH after everything. The, the last three have OH taken twice because they're group two metals. So group one metals, group two metals. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. So nacre, caserba. Sounds silly, but it works. So when we mix a strong base with a strong acid, we get a salt, we get water. Uh, when they uh, ionize, we're going to write the ionic equation now. We get the sodium, which I forgot to put a charge on. So the sodium cation plus the hydroxide ion um, and the, uh, the proton and the chloride ion. The sodium cation and the chloride ion still appear unchanged on the other side of the equation, but you get water forming by the combination of hydroxide and hydrogen. So the net ionic equation is written by... Um, Canceling these spectators, and you see the ionic equation appears. The things that appear on both sides unchanged are spectators. They're not participating in the reaction. This is the net reaction. 
Yet another example with copper chloride, this would be cupric chloride, the higher charge copper, Cu2+, plus, with potassium hydroxide, a strong base. Uh, we get copper cupric hydroxide. We looked up the solubility of hydroxide and found out that uh, copper two hydroxides are not soluble in water. KCl is, on the other hand, uh, potassium chloride. So we, this is, the, again, the ionic equation. We've crossed out the spectator ions, the ones that appear on both sides of the equation, unchanged. And that leaves us with the net ionic equation. Copper uh, cupric cation aqueous plus two hydroxides aqueous gives you cupric hydroxide as a product.